So now let's look at how to write our first parallel program in modern Fortran. Before we do that, I want to show you a comparison to what it's like to write a similar program in a language that doesn't have a built-in parallel programming model. So we're going to look at a simple Hello World program written in the C programming language using the message passing interface, the MPI toolkit, which is a much more mainstream way to write scientific code. So this example comes from an introduction to parallel programming by Peter Pacheco, published two years ago. In this example, an MPI program starts up, and each process, each MPI process, creates a greeting that it sends to the process of rank zero. Process of rank zero receives all of the greetings, as well as creating its own, and then prints them all out. In C slash MPI, this program is 32 lines. It depends on three files. There are five constants or variables that are defined. There are six procedures external to the language, those being the MPI procedures that are called. And there are 19 arguments that have to be passed to those procedures. And two conditional branches, an if and an else. All of this complexity that we're seeing here really comes from the fact that MPI doesn't know about the types in C or the size of data structures in C, and so all this information has to be passed to MPI as additional arguments. Now let's see how to write a similar program in modern Fortran. First I create the main program scope. Then I'm going to ensure that all variables must be declared, must have a declared type. Then I'm going to create a constant that I'll use to set the size of the greetings. Let's just set that to 100. Now I'm going to create the character variable that will hold the greetings. And I'm going to give it the allocatable attribute, which obligates the compiler to do certain things. We will do an explicit allocation here, but many times with allocatable variables you don't have to. The compiler will do the memory allocation for you. But this will at least obligate the compiler to free the memory once this variable goes out of scope. In this case, the variable will look locally like a scalar. So it's actually referred to as a scalar coarray. Now we'll do the allocation. The language standard requires me not to specify the size of this allocation. And the reason being that this, the size of this scalar coarray will get determined either at compile time or at program startup. And since there's only one code dimension here, it'll be set to the number of images. Now we'll create the greetings. We're going, what we're doing here is referred to as internal file IO. We're writing into this character variable. Like any other write statement, we'll have to have a format And our format is going to be twice repeating character data, which is symbolized by the A character, and two-digit integer data, symbolized by the I2. The character data will say greetings from image. And now we'll call an intrinsic function that the language provides that will return to us the number of images, or excuse me, the image that is running this line of code of, and now we'll call an intrinsic function provided by the language that returns to us the total number of images being used. I'll use the ampersand for line continuation And now we've created this data, and we'd like to communicate it to image one. But first we have to make sure that everyone has finished creating it before image one can go out and grab it. Recall that Coray programs run asynchronously 
so that there's no synchronization between the images until the user specifies so. One implicit synchronization point comes at the allocate, or any time there's an allocation or deallocation of memory. And one explicit form of synchronization comes with this sync all statement that essentially says all images have to wait at this point until each image gets to that point. Now that we know that the strings have been created, we'll say if this is the first image, then we're going to go out and grab the greetings from the other images and print them out. We don't really care what order that happens in, so we're going to communicate to the compiler, hey, there's an opportunity here for concurrency. We'll do that with the do concurrent. Inside the do concurrent, we're ranging over the entire core array from one to the number of images. And what's really nice with the co array model is that it's a one-sided communication so that we don't have to have matching sends and receives as you would with MPI. In fact, with some compilers, there's MPI happening under the hood, so there would be sends and receives underneath. Or if the compiler is using, say, a newer version of MPI that has one-sided communication or using some other communication library, then really one image can go out and grab the data from another image on the fly in the middle of a print statement here without the other image being involved. And that can have some performance benefits. We need to declare that index that we're using inside our do concurrent. And now we've written our first Fortran 2008 Coleray program. So we're going to compile this with the Intel compiler, which we invoke with the ifort command. We communicate to the compiler that we're using Coleray's in shared memory with this flag. You can also run Coleray code in distributed memory. And we're going to go ahead and set the number of images at compile time to the number of cores on the node that we're running on, which happens to be eight. You can also override, override that number of images at program startup with an environment variable. The code compiles, and let's run it. Now what's interesting here is that even though we had the do concurrent statement, we see that the greetings are coming out sequentially. So image one is successfully going out and grabbing the greetings from all the other images. But this gets back to the philosophy of Fortran of communicating properties of the, of the program, in this case communicating the opportunity for con concurrency without mandating that they have to happen. With the Intel compiler, apparently it's made the decision that for what we're doing inside the do concurrent statement, there's insufficient justification to optimize the code in some way that could lead to greetings appearing in other orders. Let's see what happens, however, if we have each image execute the code that prints the greetings from each other image. So this is essentially an all-to-all -all communication. Now we compile again, run the code, and now we see that the ordering of the statements comes out randomly. In fact, it actually could change each time we execute the code. So now even a quick visual inspection of the two codes shows that the Fortran code is significantly less complex. Let's look at some specific comparisons. It has less than half as many lines. I'm counting the continuation line as one line here. Reduction of 40% in the number of variables. And what's interesting with the Coray Fortran approach is not only are you reducing complexity, but in some areas you're actually completely eliminating complexity, going from six procedures external to the language being called down to zero, 
And of course, then the arguments being passed to those procedures goes from 19 to 0. The number of branches, recall that we had if, else in the C code, but only if in the Fortran code. The number of branches gets cut in half. And the number of files we have to include, largely because of the differences in the style of uh, C and Fortran around uh, the core language versus things that have to be brought in to the program explicitly, number of files goes from 3 to 0. So let's review quickly how we got this reduction in complexity. Partly it comes from the fact that the Core feature is built into the language, and so when we're passing data back and forth, we know the types of the data, we know the size of the data, and we don't have to pass that information in to a procedure in order to determine it. In addition, there can be other performance benefits and portability benefits because we're leaving a lot more to the compiler. It's oftentimes said that MPI is the assembly language of parallel programming. Well, what this approach is doing is it's relegating MPI to its natural place. Behind the scenes in the compiler, the Intel compiler is in fact using MPI underneath. And what that means is that a different compiler team can make a different choice. And so, for example, if we were to switch to the Cray compiler, we would find that they're using their own proprietary communication library that actually outperforms MPI on Cray hardware.